Yo, what's up? It's Jason. I'm back again with another video and another installment in this series of best of records, best of releases per year, uh, specifically of the 90s right now. Uh, kicked off the 1990 video yesterday, so this one is 1991. My 12 picks for 1991. Can't pick them all. There's a few things that uh, got a, a little bit left out. Maybe I'll mention at the end as honorable mentions. Um, but yeah, I should mention, I didn't mention my last video, but 1990 is around when I started high school, totally into hip hop. Um, that carried on quite a bit forward into the 90s. Of course, some grunge happening in there too. And then I'd say around mid 90s, I got into more uh, underground techno and house, electronic music, rave music. So some of that will be popping in the videos uh, as we go. I do have one electronic record. For today's video though uh, an early one uh, from my collecting days anyway some death metal of course also popping up in this video so let's get into it here is the top 12 kicking off with some death metal at the very bottom and a record I just just got although I had this on CD already autopsy's mental funeral putting this at number 12 I gotta say autopsy is a very strange band for me <laughs> um, they are extremely gruesome early uh, classic early old school death metal uh, but they got their own flavor and style of course as all the bands do uh, they're formed by what was it, an ex-drummer of death and I think he's on vocal duties as well the vocals are pretty gnarly and nasty as you would expect uh, very cookie monster almost silly I'm gonna say almost silly for me with the autopsy stuff but I think that's part of the charm of autopsy too is the rawness of it all this is actually their second album. I don't have their first album yet, but I do seem to have a fair amount of autopsy records. Um, this is a good one though, it's a good banger. It's very, very loose again, like I was gonna say, raw, kind of Venom-esque, um, not super polished, gruesome. Lyrics, obviously very gruesome uh, on that kind of gore end of the death, death metal spectrum. This is a 2010 reissue vinyl I just got in a trade. So happy to have that in the collection. So that's my number 12. Number 11, sticking on the metal for a minute here. Uh, another legendary record that came out back in 91. I was not aware of. In fact, I never even heard of this band until the last few years, but they were really big in the 90s. Uh, Pitch Shifter. This is their debut industrial album. Um, future industrial metal band. This one is really cool. It's very standout from some of the later stuff that comes I like the later stuff too though. Um, the later stuff being a little bit more electronic and fusion and uh, even poppy a little bit I find uh, with the WWW album for example. But this one is dark and heavy, heavy as hell. This is really sludgy. Total sludge fest on this record. Uh, reminds me a lot of Swans which I was into in the 80s as a little kid. I loved noise rock, art rock, that kind of thing. This is more of a metal take on Swans, uh, but just as heavy, just as brutal uh, out on Peaceville. This was like the 30 year anniversary, 30th anniversary of this album. Uh, solid one to have in the collection. That's my number 11. Now, number 10, as we break into the 10, I gotta get some hip hop in here. And this band was kind of, was totally fun. Uh, find I'm actually lucky I found the vinyl of this too I found it a while back but I originally heard this on the videos and this is OG style I know how to play them this is some old school uh, Texas Texas era hip hop now at this point I think we had already heard the ghetto boys was the first you know, Houston Texas rap we were starting to hear uh, definitely on the gangster tip this one is not fully not only on the gangster tip it's a little bit more fun and laid back uh, and that's the the duo there I don't know if they're still around or if they've passed passed on but really just the one album I think there might be another one but it is on the rap a lot records label which was run by Willie D and the boys of ghetto boys um, yeah the, the video for catch em slipping was super super fun standout track on the album. The whole album is really fun. Uh, not something I spin every day, but it's definitely one of my faves in my hip-hop collection. And something you just, you don't see often in the VC or anywhere, really. 
Now, number nine, going back to some death metal, early death metal, there's <laughs> just loads of it in the early 90s. And this band, I am still kind of kicking myself that I didn't go to the concert, but I know my buddy Wilson did. Uh, had tickets for it too. Missed out on seeing Suffocation, The Legends, in, in person. Uh, and this, again, another recent pickup just this past weekend. Finally got a, a vinyl copy of it. Man, that's good. Effigy of the Forgotten. Really killer stuff. Uh, slam and death metal. like the vocal more on this than the Autopsy, for example. It's a little more lower guttural. And, um, yeah, just totally banging stuff here from Suffocation. Don't have anything else by Suffocation, actually. So uh, I think this is their debut album, if I'm not uh, mistaken. Uh, it's a great way to begin my Suffocation uh, experience. So that gets us number nine. I think we're eight, number eight now. I'm just going to double check here. <laughs> so number eight, got to show a cassette for this one. This was a jam that we were definitely rocking nonstop back in 1991 when it came out. Ice T's OG just had uh, OG style, so we didn't get OG twice in this uh, video. But this is OG, OG. This is the original Gangster cassette by Ice T. I need to get this on CD. I need to rock it more often too. There's just a shit ton of songs on this album. Um, this is not my original original copy, but I managed to score one again not long ago. Uh, this is a really nice return to form for Ice T. It's like his fourth album. Uh, all the lyrics here follow along. He's always good at printing the, li the lyrics in the tape deck. Um, but yeah, it was it was the album after Iceberg. Iceberg was a little bit of a letdown. It was an interesting album. Though it, he was taking some different risks and chances, showing different influences, having Jello Biafra do the, the intro, etc. This one felt like a total return to form. Also, by this time, there was already, you know, NWA, Ghetto Boys, some really hardcore gangster rap, horror rap even. So Ice-T, I think we're all kind of wondering, can Ice-T kind of match the ferocity of some of that stuff? Um, because, you know, he was an original gangster. He was an old, an OG uh, gangster rapper with Ron Pays and Power. But yeah, he definitely came back really nice on this one. And also... It had the hit, too, which was the New Jack City, I think. New Jack Hustler is on here from New Jack City, the movie. And uh, Home of the Body Bag, Evil E, uh, Straight Up. Yeah, Mind Over Matter. Lots of, lots of cool tracks on this thing. Um, loads of tracks. Some of them are interludes and skits, etc. as well. So Ice-T is my number eight. Number seven, going to go move back into some death metal here um might be the last appearance of metal in this top 10 we'll see but had to mention morbid angel just got a cop a cd copy of this but also have a tape copy of this too this is the blessed are the sick um second album by morbid angel maybe my favorite by them um definitely definitely killer uh, it's got a nice variety on this thing and i also appreciate sort of the production value in here, the different samples that they used and stuff. Some horror movie kind of uh, themes. Uh, vocals are good. Yeah, I mean, it's Morbid Angel, so you don't really need to say a whole lot. Originators, one of the originators of death metal. And that nice crossover between thrash and death metal. Not only thrash on here, there's some slower mid-tempo stuff too. So that is going to be my, what is it, number seven? Man, I suck at counting. Number six. Uh, a CD that I just showed that I just just got in the last video gotta mention these guys I have it on vinyl too and that is Twin Hype out of Jersey the twins um, this was like the EP I think it's like the last thing that they put out uh, the EP after the first album all brand new tracks like I said just got this on CD as well I am doubling down on my Twin Hype um, first album was more very funky, more a little bit more on the dance tip of hip hop, but this one came out a little bit more hardcore, a little more rugged on tracks like Wrong Place, Wrong Time, uh, The Lyrical Rundown, Double Barrel. Um, yeah, every track on this EP is sick. Uh, even the skit is pretty good. So this came out on Profile Records. Uh, not a full length, but I got to 
definitely keep it in here in the top 10 for sure. Twin Hype, if you see that one, pick it up. I think it's, I think it's their best. First album had a couple of hits, which is also really fun too. But that EP, I think, um, is better than the first album. So number five, we're into the top five. A lot of hip hop in, in this list, obviously. And this is a record that a lot of us were waiting for to come out, wanted to see what was gonna be the follow-up for the previous one. And was this band still going to be kicking it? And they were. Uh, Public Enemies, Apocalypse 91. Uh, also got the cassette version on this. Uh, you know it's a dope album when you got multiple formats of it. Um, but yeah, this is probably the last, this is the last Public Enemy album that I bought. Didn't really follow up on them much after that. Same thing with Ice-T. Uh, kind of lost interest. Kind of can't believe that they're still around. They really lost a lot of their momentum after uh, after this album. Uh, still produced by the Bomb Squad, and uh, this is a gatefold double album at the time. It's my OG press. Uh, there they are, Public Enemy. I did see them live once uh, earlier than this uh, for the Fight the Power tour uh, as they were launching Fear of a Black Planet. Fear of a Black Planet. Should have been in my last video, actually. I think that was a 1990 uh, oversight. But here we are. We're trying to fix it with 1991's Apocalypse 91. Huge, huge tracks on this. Night Train was like kind of a James Brown sample thing. Kind of uh, their single on this. And Can't Trust It was not bad. But um, where is it? By the time I get to Arizona is the huge track. Calling out the racist uh, governor of Arizona at the time who is not celebrating MLK Day, I think. Shut Him Down is also really good on here, and you do have the Bring the Noise with Anthrax version on this album, too. So, pretty solid record. I mean, looking back now, it probably probably didn't play that as much as Ice-T OG, but nevertheless, I ranked it higher this time. Um, so, what's up next? I am going to go into electronic music. Uh... Or number four, right? Um, as I said, yeah, I didn't really get into a lot of techno and rave music until kind of the mid '90s, towards the end of uh, high school. And uh, but I did have this album. Pretty sure I got it either in '91 or '92. Came out in '91, of course, on Warp Records of the UK. Sweet Exorcist. Now this has one of the band members from Cabaret Voltaire, which I was also into in the '80s along with Skinny Puppy, that kind of stuff. But this doesn't sound at all like Skinny Puppy or Cab Voltaire. This is very sleek, minimalist. Um, technical term for it, actually, they call it bleep. So it's not really, it's pretty minimal techno, uh, but the UK style of it being called bleep techno. And uh, I mean, really kind of just inventing subgenres at this point. But yeah, a lot of Jack in the titles. Let's see all that. Mad Jack, Trick Jack, Jack Jack, Track Jack, Kick Jack, Psych Jack, and then Clonk's Coming, just to finish it off. The band name um, apparently was taken from, I can't remember, an album from a, more of a rock band, I think. But um, yeah, Richard H. Kirk of Kev Voltaire, who has passed away in recent years. Really seminal album. Um, a little bit quirky. No vocals in this thing at all, and uh, kind of bleeps and blops, but it's got a, it's got grooves to it as well. Just a really cool album. I, I recommend people checking it out. I'll put a link, put a link down below. So an early, early techno record for me, uh, as I was getting into more club stuff and then rave stuff to follow. That's my number four. Number three, going back to hip hop. Um, Man, I don't know which one. Okay, I'm, I'm going to go with this one, number three. I'm already switched. I'm switching them here at the last minute. I'm going to go with the debut by Cypress. Um, wow. This uh, this is a, a stellar album. Still is. I think I got double copies of this record. I did back in the day, anyway. Uh, just lucky to have picked up my OG copy back in the day. That's how that looked there. Rough House. Kind of not on Def Jam, but on like a an associated Def Jam label. Um put out by Columbia and Sony. This is a Canadian press. Um, but yeah, uh, really cool band. 
it kept going. Um, later stuff is good too, but I think I, I always prefer the debut the best. Uh, this guy, how, how Could I Just Kill a Man, Hand on the Pump. Um, pigs, of course, opening it up. Real Estate, Stone is the Way of the Walk. <laughs> it's solid. I'll probably be playing Stone is the Way of the Walk this week. I got a little DJ gig coming up for Outside Market, so I think some Cypress will fit the bill. Uh, if you don't know Cypress Hill, you got you to gotta go check them out for sure. Uh, Well-respected in hip-hop and even in the metal scenes, I think, too. Uh, just a great West Coast hip-hop act. And that was the debut, 1991. Number two, there's two left. And one is not hip-hop, actually. If you haven't guessed yet, what's going to be sitting at the top of 1991. But number two is definitely hip-hop. And I had to show this one. Ice Cube's Death Certificate album. I also have double copies of this, a more beat up version. This is my OG, very minty, very minty copy. Uh, kept well over the years. Uh, Priority Records, um, Ice Cube, of course, of NWA. This is like his second album. He had the EP in between first and second, and um, killer album. Um, I think, I mean, obviously I own this one. I don't even know if I own the first one. I, I, I play this one more than the debut. The debut was amazing too, and Kill It All, Kill It Will, the EP. But man, this is a good album too. A lot of good tracks on this. My Summer Vacation, Steady Mobbin, uh, A Bird in the Hand, I always play that one, one of my faves. Colorblind is also really good. He's got some diss tracks on here as well, where he's dissing his former bandmates. The whole package. Gangster rap, political, it's Ice Cube. I mean, it's Ice Cube. Before he went into the family, family fun movies, etc. My video is going to run out quick, so I'm going to end off with number one, the biggest album of the year. Slightly censored cover here for you guys at home. Nirvana, never mind. I mean, come on. It's the one, right? Still play this a lot. Like it more than Bleach, but Bleach is a close second, their debut.